let me do the honors. Uh, let me uh, take the opportunity to introduce uh, Joshua. Uh, Joshua and I worked together uh, back in 2010, 2000, 2009, 2010, I believe. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I reached out to him, he was, he gracefully accepted our invite to be at this event. So I want to thank Joshua for, for coming here. Uh, again, Joshua is someone I think, uh, most of you would know, uh, his amazing book on refactoring to patterns has had a significant impact on, uh, I think most developers out there. Uh, and, uh, you know, you were in India 2016 or 2017, you, you did a talk on modern agile, uh, yes. and you've yes. been going around, uh, talking about that. And then I believe since then you kind of, uh, been a little under the radar, uh, you know, you've taken the last five years, uh, to put all your, uh, 20 plus years of learning, uh, and, and you've, uh, now come up with this, uh, book, uh, which is yet to be launched, the joy of agility. And I believe today's talk, you're going to give us a sneak preview into the book and all the amazing uh, insights you have to share with us. So without much delay, I'm going to hand it over to Joshua. Okay, thank you so much, Naresh. Namaste. And uh, thanks to everyone who uh, joined today. Uh, it's wonderful to give this uh, speech for the very first time. This is my first time uh, talking about the book. And, you know, Agile India is an awesome place to, to do that. So. Um, I look forward to uh, any of your questions. So please don't be shy, write a question and um, we'll hang out uh, in the hangout room after the talk. The other morning I woke up and was laying in bed and thought, you know what? Joy of agility can form a little crossword puzzle. So if you're into, uh, not crossword puzzles, so uh, what is it? Scrabble, Scrabble letters, right? So there you go. Um, joy of agility, yeah. Um, I think that agile is misunderstood, but ultimately when you're really being agile, um, there's a certain joy that comes. There's a joy you experience from agility, from being agile, for real. And that's what um, this talk is about. That's what the book is about, the joy that comes from it. So let's go back to 2013. And in 2013, there was a Super Bowl in the United States. Um, it's, it's the biggest sporting event of the year, and it's when um, lots of advertisers compete to, you know, get attention. So it's a giant, you know, commercial event, um, in addition to being an athletic event. And it was taking place at the Superdome in New Orleans. So basically, you know, giant dome. Um, the halftime show was with Beyonce and that was pretty cool. Um, then this, what's called the third quarter started and a few minutes into the third quarter, the lights in the Superdome went out. Only a few lights, as you can see in this photo, actually stayed on. So it didn't go on complete pitch dark, but it was dark, okay? Um, the game stopped, and everyone was like, WTF. I remember watching on television, and all of a sudden, just everything came to a, a complete halt. It was unheard of, never happened before, crazy, and no one thought, you know, everyone was like, what happened? Could it have been a terrorist event? Um, are we under attack or something? You know, what's going on around here? And gradually they realized, okay, it's not a terrorist attack. Something's gone wrong with the electricity. Uh, you know, we need to fix the electrical problem. Now, um, while this was all happening, there was a team in New York a team that worked for the company called Oreo. Some of you may be aware of the cookie, the Oreo cookie. And while this Superdome was in the dark um, for about, I think it was about 17 to 20 minutes, um, this team sent out a tweet and it said, power out, no problem. You can still dunk in the dark. Dunking means you're taking your Oreo cookie and you're dunking it into some milk, typically. That's a very common thing to do. 
And this tweet went viral. Uh, and basically everyone started talking about it because it was so spontaneous, right? This wasn't planned. No one planned a blackout at the Super Bowl. Yet this creative team was able to get this thing out within pretty much within a few minutes of, of the lights going out. And it just went nuts. It went nuts on Twitter. It went nuts on Facebook and Pinterest. Um, and the next day, uh, basically the advertising industry, which is always very fast, you know, focused on this Super Bowl event, said, you know, so who won the Super Bowl? And it was like, it was a tweet by the Oreo cookie company. It wasn't some fancy commercial that took millions of dollars to make. It was just a tweet. It won the Super Bowl. So we have to ask ourselves, how was this team so agile, right? How, how did this happen? And the story goes back a few years. Um, at a certain point, the Oreo cookie turned 100 years old. And the Oreo cookie company said, we want to remind Americans that we are America's cookie. We're the cookie for Americans. And basically they formed a team called the Daily Twist. And the Daily Twist focused on producing daily content about the Oreo cookie or featuring the Oreo cookie to remind Americans about it. 100 pieces of social media content over 100 consecutive days. This tight-knit team was formed. They learned how to work quickly and easily together to produce content every day based upon real world events. So for example, the Dark Knight Rises happened um, in theaters and there's your Oreo cookie. The uh, pr Pride Parade was happening on June 25th, the Gay Pride Parade. Uh, there was a Mars rover landing. So there's the Oreo cookie with the wheels. Love that one. And then of course there's Elvis week, August 14th. Basically every single day for 100 days, the team produced content. And there's all 100 pieces of content that went out on social media. So this team had developed a capability to deliver very quickly and very easily the close collaboration and excellent communication, incredible decision-making uh, clarity, right? And so on the day of the event for the Super Bowl, uh, they were prepared. They were absolutely prepared. Uh, so what we can say about them is we, is we look at agile and say agile is basically uh, this ability to move with quick, easy grace. That is what Agile is. It's the Venn diagram and it's right there in the middle. It's, it's not quick, right? Agile does not equal quick and Agile doesn't equal just easy. It's gotta be all three of these things, quick, easy, and graceful. And what I'll submit to you is that team uh, at Oreo, which consisted by the way of some external branding companies. It wasn't just Oreo employees. It was a, a, a balanced team as I like to call it of the right creative staff and management staff working in real time to be able to do things like this. Um, another way of looking at Agile is it's quick, adaptable and resourceful, right? This team was incredibly adaptable, right? No one expected this blackout. And then within minutes, they, they put out this award-winning tweet, right? Um, and yeah, okay, you could say that's not so big of a deal, but it, it, it did exactly what the Oreo cooking company wanted to do with the Daily Twist, which was grow America's relationship again with the Oreo cookie. So the team was quick, they were adaptable to an unexpected situation, and they were incredibly resourceful in very, very quickly coming up with this incredible tweet. So the definition of agile, which you might've heard me talk about, I talk about this a lot because I don't, I mean, I think there are incredible mysteries in the world, right? Um, we lost a, an American president here, John F. Kennedy, years ago, and it's still a mystery. Who killed JFK? Uh, however, the definition of Agile is not a mystery, okay? It, un unfortunately, if you ask 100 people, you know, what's the definition of Agile, you're going to get completely different answers. And that's unfortunate because if you look at the dictionary, I specifically prefer the Merriam-Webster dictionary. It, it, 
It's, a, it's an awesome dictionary. And it says that the definition of the word agile means marked by ready ability to move with quick, easy grace, or having a quick, resourceful, and adaptable character. That's the definition. That's what it means to be agile. As I said in, in the abstract for this talk, it's not a manifesto. It's an adjective. It's not a management fad. It's an adjective. It's not a framework. It's an adjective. An agile dancer, an agile surgeon, an agile team, an agile mind, right? So now I've been working on a book for about five years um, and something funny happened along the way uh, of writing the book. I like to walk the talk of agile, right? I like to be agile, not just talk about it. Um, so what I started doing when I started writing the book was uh, I just started writing down stories, stories of agility that I loved, whether they were from my own experience or from other people's uh, experiences. I just wanted to share some stories of real agility. And I wanted to do it not just in the software space, but in life in general, in other professions. I wanted to share how comedians are agile, how um, you know, aerospace people are agile when they invent airplanes or come up with things. I wanted to look at entrepreneurs and how they're agile. I wanted stories of agility that help to make people understand the definition of agile. So I started writing a bunch of stories and this is just some of them. There are many more, lots and lots of stories. Now I knew at some point that if I'm gonna make a book, I have to basically categorize these stories. I gotta put them into like parts of a book. I can't just have a giant list of stories. So I started the you know, difficult work of trying to find a, a category for each story. Where does this one belong? And I, you know, if you know me, you've, you've heard about modern agile and there are four principles of modern agile. And I initially played with those, but they didn't quite fit all of the stories. So I had to keep going deeper. And I'd come up with some categories, then I'd change them. Then I'd wake up two months later and realize I need to change them again. Gradually, slowly but surely, emerged what I now call agile mantras. Six agile mantras emerged out of that process. Let's go over them now. The first one is be quick, but don't hurry. And it's a fantastic mantra by coach John Wooden. And by the way, let's talk about the word mantra. It's different from principle. A mantra is something you focus on daily. It influences your decision-making. It influences your behavior. You're always kind of like looking at yourself and, and how you're doing compared to the mantra. And I do this now. Am I being quick or am I hurrying? When you hurry, you make mistakes. Maybe they're costly mistakes, right? Uh, when you're quick, everything's flowing and, and harmonious. We want to be quick. We don't want to hurry. It's very, very difficult to know the difference. You've really got to understand, you know, and look at it. Am I rushing or hurrying when I could be going a little bit slower and taking my time? So this coach Wooden here was one of the most beloved coaches of all time. He's considered the best basketball coach of all time. His teams won uh, 10 out of 12 NCAA championships, that's college level basketball in a 12 year span. Um, he's broken all the records and he's considered the one of the best coaches of all time in general, not even just in basketball, incredibly wise man. And be quick, but don't hurry was one of his mantras, one of his most important mantras. He would constantly focus on helping his athletes learn it in order to become agile athletes. They, they were extraordinarily agile. So I love his, his wisdom and there's the stories about him in the book. Be quick, but don't hurry, the first mantra. Second mantra, be poised to adapt. Now this phrase here, this used to be called by the way, um, you know, in, in modern agile, I call it experiment and learn rapidly. Um, at some point it was learn and adapt rapidly. And then at some point in all my studies of resilience engineering, um, the resilience engineering people talk about being poised to adapt. When you're poised, you are in balance, you're ready. You've done a bunch of pre-work to be ready to adapt. 
a lot of it happens before the, the, the need to adapt occurs. You've already created enough what they call adaptive capacity, the capacity to adapt in the event that you need to, just like the Oreo team. This picture here, this wonderful illustration of the books filled with illustrations, by the way. Um, thank you, Julius, our wonderful illustrator. This is a picture of the award-winning flight of the Gossamer Condor, which was the first human-powered flight and uh, literally a human pedaling, taking off, going a, a mile radius in the air in a figure eight, landing safely. Um, an incredible example of being poised to adapt because they adapted this airplane uh, within hours, days, constantly adapting it to make it work. It was, it was an, it's an incredible story that's in the book as well. The next mantra, <clears throat> be balanced and graceful. So what does this mean? Um, this is probably one of my favorite mantras um, and there's so much I could say about, I could do an entire speech about this. But what you're looking at right here is in a mathematical graph theory diagram from the 2010 FIFA World Cup, which was the Netherlands against Spain. And these incredible professors at um, the University of London mathematics department, they basically created these graphs showing the number of, of passes between players. And they could look at the data for, from the, the, the Netherlands team and the Spanish team to see in general, you know, how much passing occurs between players on these teams, the Spanish team was more balanced and more graceful, right? There was a greater balance of passing between the players, whereas with the, the team from the Netherlands, certain players dominated the ball more and other players didn't get it as much. Based upon this graph theory, um, these two mathematicians said before the FIFA World Cup, Spain will win and here's why. They're more balanced and, and more graceful. Now, being balanced is a huge topic we can talk about. I think to be agile, you got to be balanced. And that affects everything. Balance in, in your collaboration. If you're in a meeting and there's 10 people and only two are talking the entire time, it's an unbalanced meeting. If you have tremendous technical debt in your program, um, your, your ability to be poised to adapt is, is you know, suspect. And you're not really uh, keeping a a good balance between production and maintenance. You could look at balance in many, many ways. Being graceful is also extraordinarily important with people, graceful with your customers, graceful with your, your staff and your colleagues. Um, be balanced and graceful is our third mantra. Now this one you may have heard before, um, W. Edwards Deming was famous for being a incredible management guru, quality, uh, total quality management. His books are revered. He He's an icon of management. And he would say that the manager's job or the leader's job is to drive out fear. Now, this is closely related to a principle in modern agile called make safety a prerequisite in the work of Paul O'Neill. Um, hugely important for performance, for high performance, is to not be afraid. And I talk, talk about the Fearless Trilogy. I talk about some stories from all three of these books here. Um, three wonderful books. And, uh, you know, I have examples of those in the book. Then we got Start Minimal and Evolve, right? This is a graphic I made years ago. It's actually up here on my wall. Um, and it, it's basically about, you know, um, starting minimal and evolving, just like I did on my book. I started with a list of stories and then I eventually coalesced it and got it more and more, you know, um, sophisticated over time to be a final finished book. Start Minimal and Evolve probably should be very you know, understandable to anyone who's been involved in Agile. We start with something small and primitive and basic, and then we evolve it. So finally, we have Be Readily Resourceful. This is a story I want to quickly tell. Um, Sir uh, Richard Branson, um, years and years ago, was in the British Virgin Islands needing to fly to Puerto Rico. And he's in the airport. It's a perfectly fine day, no weather problems. And the airline company says, hey, the flight's canceled. No reason, no, uh, they didn't say when it's gonna fly again, just it's canceled. So everyone's stuck. Now, most people would just maybe go to the restaurants or bars or you know, look around, but Richard Branson's not most people. He's readily resourceful. He went out, found a charter airplane company, 
said, can you fly me from here to Puerto Rico? They said, yes. How much per, How much will it cost? You know, 3,000 bucks. He did some math for each seat and went around the airport selling seats on what was Virgin Airlines' first flight. It was a nonstop flight from British Virgin Islands to Puerto Rico, and it was about $39 per seat. He sold every seat, and they flew uh, without any problems to Puerto Rico. He was readily resourceful. So to finish my speech here, um, I believe that agile is not a mystery. It's an adjective. It's a humble adjective with a very clear definition, a ready ability to move with quick, easy grace or having a quick, resourceful, and adaptable character. I think it's guided by mantras. Mantras, so things you think about every single day and hold yourself to those. Am I being quick or, uh, or am I hurrying? And so on, right? And I, I've defined six mantras. And then it's unrealized in, it's realized, sorry, in unlimited ways, right? There's any number of ways in any profession you're in to realize these mantras, okay? So if you're interested in some new news about the book, talks that I'm giving, events and, uh, and more, just go to industriallogic.com slash joy dash of dash agility slash, and you will uh, be able to learn more about the forthcoming book. I, I've just found the publisher that's going to publish it. Really excited about that. And uh, I'm looking forward to the book coming out in 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Naresh. Thank you, um, Agile India. All right. Awesome. Thanks, uh, Joshua. That was really interesting. Love the six mantras. Uh, I happened to read a little bit about them before, but hearing the stories directly from, from you was amazing. So appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're a little uh, running behind time. Uh, uh, yeah, really interesting. Thank you. Inspirational. Uh, Cool. I think this good uh, comments. So is uh, Zafar, he's asking, are the six mantras for individuals or organizations or both? Uh, they're for individuals, teams, organizations, all levels. All levels can be looking at these mantras for sure. With that, uh, thank you, uh, Joshua. And thanks everyone for joining in. Uh, take Namaste. care. Thank you. Namaste. Have a good evening. Bye.